Hey guys, welcome back to Movie Talk, here to talk about The Flash. I loved it. Um, and here's the thing I gotta warn you about. I am a whore when it comes to nostalgia stuff like that, you know? I love Ready Player One. I love Spider-Man No Way Home. I love Ghostbusters Afterlife. So uh, if you don't like movies like that, that deal with nostalgia, you are not gonna like this movie at all. And I can totally understand that. But if you do like uh, fun moments like that, I think you'll enjoy this. However, for other people, like uh, comic book, uh, diehard uh, comic book fans who love uh, the Flashpoint comics, I think you're going to hate this movie because this is honestly a bastardization of the comics. It, uh, key, it has some uh, key points, but overall, yeah, uh, it's not nothing like the comics. So I think you're going to hate this movie. Uh, if you want a better version, there's the animated uh, movie uh, Justice League uh, Flashpoint Paradox. Uh, I think that does a much better job adapting uh, the comics, so I think you would like that a lot more, and you would really hate this movie. But for other people who just want a goofy sci-fi time travel adventure that just happens to have Michael Keaton coming back as Batman, we have Supergirl, and uh, we have uh, Michael Shannon back as General Zod, and uh, we have a bunch of cameos as well, I think you're going to like this one. Um, I honestly enjoyed this a lot more than uh, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Um, I uh, for, for the nostalgia factor, this hit the spot for me compared to Transformers Rise of the Beasts. And I just saw that recently too. So uh, for nostalgia, yeah, um, uh, The Flash uh, did it justice. But if I wanted... Uh, a movie with the same elements, especially dealing with canon events and uh, different dimensions and uh, different versions of people and stuff. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the best version. So, yeah, and it's a shame that these two movies just happen to come out almost around the same time, within the same month, uh, with, uh, within the same month. So that's a little bit of a bummer because I felt like if The Flash came out like when it was supposed to, I think like a year or two ago, I think uh, by the time Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse came out, uh, we wouldn't think, oh, The Flash uh, just uh, sucked at that point. Uh, when uh, this comes out, we were like, oh, uh, that's actually very creative. But now the fact that The Flash came out after Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, I think a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is much better. Do not see The Flash. That's uh, trash or something like that. Uh, it's a uh, it kind of sucks uh, because both movies deal with a lot of the similar uh, things. So, but again, I gotta uh, be honest. Spider Man Across the Spider Verse is the best version of this, but I still really recommend this movie because again, it's a goofy sci fi adventure and that is fun. But not just that, the emotional elements that it has in it, it really worked. Like every time it deals with a uh, Barry and his mother, that really got to me. Uh, almost on the same level as Miles Morales and his mother, Rio, in um, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So yeah, the emotional elements are handled very well in here. So I honestly, I think they might be my most favorite part, uh, to be honest. Whenever uh, it gets to the drama, when it actually settles down and focuses on the emotional elements, I thought this movie really shines. So whenever uh, Barry is with his mother, and also there's this scene where Barry was talking to the other Barry, and uh, he uh, was expressing his anger to him uh, because they are both raised differently because of the two different events. That scene uh, with uh, them uh, talking in the Batcave, I thought that was really well done. Uh, so yeah, I gotta say, those two uh, scenes are possibly uh, my most favorite parts in this movie, even though it has Michael Keaton as Batman and we have Supergirl uh, kicking ass, you know? So yeah, that uh, says a lot about this movie. Um, so the CG is iffy in a lot of parts. But I'll say this, the biggest positive about the visual effects, even the good uh, ones, uh, good CG and the bad CG, it's creative. Like uh, the visual effects shots are really pretty. Uh, the way the camera is uh, spinning and uh, it doesn't shake or anything, it doesn't look like uh, uh, you can actually see what's going on. Sure, uh, it's just uh, a bad CG double of The Flash or a bad CG double of uh, Supergirl and Batman, but they're doing so many awesome things in it. And also the visually, it looks really, really um, cool. It looks unique. 
So I think that's why I think that's uh, how uh, it can win people over. Sure, a lot of people can say it just looks like a pre-rendered cutscene from like a PS4 game or a late PS3 game or something like that. But honestly, though, it worked for me. Sure, uh, I don't see it as real, but again, at least that it's visually cool. Uh, the animations that happened were cool, and the uh, stunts that happened were cool. Uh, I even, I gotta say, I think Ant-Man and the Wasp of Quantumania has better special effects, but I could uh, recommend this movie based on the action scenes alone compared to Ant-Man and the Wasp of Quantumania, because at least it's not like a still camera where people are just doing light punches or something like that and doesn't do anything unique with it, you know? At least here, it looks cool. So they really delivered on the action, at least. I visually speaking though, I felt like this needed a few months to finish up because there are uh whenever it focuses on uh people that are humans, yeah, it does not look real, especially when it comes to the babies. I'll talk about that more in the spoiler spoiler section. Yeah, there's a sequence with babies and it just does not look right. But that the scene that the babies are in, it's really fun. So that's why I was okay with that. All right, so uh, yeah, for Michael Keaton as, is back as Batman, and I loved it, honestly. And they were able to show more of what this Batman can do, especially in a uh, action scene, and it's really awesome. Sure, uh, it's a stunt double, obviously, and sure, there are times where it, you can tell it's just a CG model, but at the same time, they show this Batman doing things that he wouldn't be able to do back in 1989 because, you know, the stiffness of the costume and also the directing and, uh, you know, because Michael Keaton is not an action star, so it makes sense that he would not fight that way back in 1989. But here we get to see how Batman has evolved his fighting technique and everything. And this is the Batman I always thought that's how he fought. You know, that's how I pictured him fighting, and they actually showed that, you know? So that's what I loved about it. Sure, we couldn't see that back in 1989, but at the same time, I'm happy that they showed what this Batman can do, and it's really cool. And sure, there's uh, some nostalgic lines, too, like, uh, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. And they do mention one time, how much do you weigh? <laughs> I was like, oh my god, you're bringing that back? <laughs> and yeah, they did show uh, the, the the bag with the Joker's, uh, you know, chattering uh, mouthpiece and stuff like that, too. Uh, man, uh, and you see the Batcave and everything. It's, it's cool. I liked it. Uh, I understand people who hate that stuff, but I loved it. And we have Supergirl, who I really like. I really do. Um, and I love the backstory she has in this. Um, even though originally it's supposed to be Superman in this situation, uh, but the, since they switched, swapped it out with Supergirl, I uh, didn't have a problem with that, especially since this is a different side of Supergirl that we have never seen before. And it, honestly, I thought it worked better, to be honest. And uh, later on, when it, uh, when it shows more about uh, you know Supergirl and Zod, the relationship and everything, and what has happened uh, since the events of like the Man of Steel, even though that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, yeah, I thought that really worked very well, especially with that little change they did involving uh, Clark Kent. Um, so, uh, yeah, I loved uh, everything with uh, Flash and his mother. I loved uh, everything with Batman. I loved everything with Supergirl. There is one thing that's a... Uh, there's a couple things that are a little disappointing. Um, one is dealing with the antagonist of the movie. I'm not going to uh, spoil uh, who it is yet, but I'll just say that there's really not much of this antagonist in the movie. And when they show the antagonist again, that's it. So, yeah, that's all I can say before I get into the spoilers. So I thought that was a bit disappointing that they would go that route. I expected... I expected the finale to be some incredibly big uh, chase through time or fight through time or something like that. But no, it it is not like that at all. It's not what I hoped for. So that's why I felt disappointed. And the other thing is um, uh, when uh, Barry is trying to clear the name of his father. And there are some parts where it kind of doesn't make sense. And yeah, that's all I can say before going into spoilers. So yeah, uh, those are my two biggest disappointments.
But uh, yeah, the cameos in here, they won me over. And there is a, um, there is a scene in the mid credits and uh, that uh, should just be it. Uh, so yeah, I overall, I highly recommend it for people who just want a goofy sci-fi time travel movie, you know? This movie is so much like Back to the Future Part 2 mixed a little bit with Time Cop and Looper. And I guess it's the better version of Lightyear. Seriously, it's the better version of the Lightyear movie from last year, you know? So that's, that's, <laughs> that's hilarious, honestly. Okay, so now I have to go into spoilers. Okay, let's uh, talk about the antagonist. Dark Flash. He's only shown twice in the movie. They show him once at like the end of the first act, and then they show him again in the finale. And he doesn't really do much. And I was really disappointed with that, especially uh, after, you know, reading uh, some of the comics and also watching the animated uh, movie uh, Flashpoint Paradox uh, with a uh, reverse flash and the flash. Yeah, in uh, even in the animated uh, movie, even though the fight was very short and Barry Allen still lost, um, at least there's this awesome chase slash fight between two speedsters throughout this uh, uh, destroyed city. That was cool. I was kind of hoping for something similar to that, except, you know, throughout time. Like, uh, Barry is trying to stop everything from what's happening, and Dark Flash is trying to stop him from doing that. So then we have uh, this incredibly uh, cool chase scene throughout time and space and everything. Like, uh, especially uh, since uh, we had the Injustice uh, video games where uh, uh, the Flash has a special move where he could time travel back in time to like uh, 65 million years ago with the dinosaurs and everything and go back to the future and stuff like that. So yeah, I was kind of hoping that the Flash, w uh, there would be the finale that involves something like that, like a chase or a slash uh, fight throughout the uh, space and time. But no, it's nothing like that. It's just talking. So that's why I was a bit disappointed. I'm okay with the fact that Dark Flash is just Barry Allen. Well, not exactly the Barry Allen we know, but the young Barry Allen who ends up becoming this uh, version of uh, the Flash because he's been corrupted and he's trying to figure out how to uh, save his mother and save Supergirl and save everyone. But uh, because uh, he keeps getting corrupted, that's why he becomes this mass. But I was hoping that it becomes more than that. But no, it's just a talking uh, at the end. And it, uh, it reminds me so much of like a looper. So uh, that's why I was, and uh, you know, a uh, liar actually. <laughs> so that's why I was a bit disappointed. I wish they did more with Dark Flash. Um, or, uh, you know, he could have been, again, that's the thing. If it turned out that he was reverse, uh, reverse Flash, if he was uh, Thawne, um, may, I think this movie could have been a lot longer because they have to deal with, uh, you know, reverse flash and all that stuff. But no, uh, I guess, again, I don't mind the fact that Dark Flash is, you know, uh, the young Barry Allen becoming, uh, this version in this timeline. I'm okay with that, but I wish they did more with him. So that's why I was a bit disappointed that I went, uh, out this way. The other thing is, uh, with, uh, Barry Allen's, uh, father and also the killing of his mother. If I had the ability to time travel back in time, I'm pretty, yes, I would try to stop the, uh, uh, the murder of my mother. But wouldn't I try to figure out who killed my mother in the first place? No? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to figure who, who killed your mother, especially if they got away with it, you know? So uh, if something happens to your father in the present and he has to stay in prison, at least you could try to find out who the killer was. Barely, Barry Allen didn't even care. I don't think there was a line of dialogue that said anything about who the killer was because uh, uh, Barry's dad is in prison, so of course they don't know who the killer was. So that's why I'm wondering why Barry Allen never thought about that. So I was talking to my friend about this, and uh, uh, he was thinking maybe they're saving up for the sequel that turns out to be a Thawne who killed the mother and that uh, he set everything up and stuff. But if it turned out to be Thawne, why didn't he just either, one, kill... Um, Barry Allen's dad in that alternate timeline, you know, or uh, two, uh, kill the mother anyway in that alternate timeline and frame uh, Barry's dad for it. Because who's going to believe that, you know, there's this guy who could run uh, super fast at this point? Because uh, no one knows Wonder Woman at this point. No one knows Aquaman. No one knows even uh, Superman. 
So who's going to believe that? Of course, the closest person uh, that was next to the dead body of the mother would be uh, Barry Allen's dad. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Why Thawne didn't just, if it was Thawne, why didn't he just uh, kill the mother in that alternate timeline anyway? It makes no sense. Doesn't matter about the tomatoes or anything. So I guess they're in this version, they're trying to make it seem like it's just a regular guy who happened to kill uh, Bar uh, Barry's mom. But again, I I feel like if that's the case, you have the ability to time travel back in time. Why don't you figure out who the killer was so you can figure out more what to do with that killer in the present? That's just me. I don't know. So I thought uh, for uh, the writing for that part was a little weak. But... If you're able to uh, bypass that, you know, if you're able to uh, not uh, think uh, think about it too much, everything else I thought was okay. Um, I thought the beginning was a lot of fun when uh, Barry is in line trying to get his breakfast, but there, there's this obnoxious guy who's making a sandwich solo. So Barry had uh, Barry's being called in by Alfred because Superman is busy, Wonder Woman's not answering, uh, Al. Uh, Aquaman is uh, also not answering. Cyborg's not answering. So the Flash is the closest one. And the Flash is disappointed because he felt like he's a cleanup crew. He's only for backup or anything like that. So yeah, uh, Flash is uh, trying to have a normal life. But uh, Batman keeps uh, making him do everything else. But the bat. Uh, meanwhile, Batman is trying to solve this case on his own because uh, of the hijackers and all that stuff. And if it falls into the water supply, everyone in Gotham will be poisoned and everything. So uh, yeah, B uh, Batman has his own stuff. He just needed help from uh, Barry. So then we have a uh, Barry uh, changing into a suit, and he's about to gear up. And I love this joke where you see lightning forming at the bottom of the screen, and it's gonna show the Flash, the title card, the Flash. But then it got interrupted, and every Everything stopped because some uh, fangirls were cheering on for the Flash. I love that joke. Like, it's like, the Flash. Oh, no, it just stopped. That was fun. And then we saw him doing his ice skating thing, which still looks goofy, but I'm okay with it, I guess, because he's running at super speed. So I guess the, the only thing he could do is to ice skate <laughs> across the land. But it was cool. He gets to the hospital, and the hospital is uh, about to fall. Uh, uh, Crashed, uh, crashed to the ground. And then he sees all the way up there babies falling out of the sky. So then it becomes similar to the X-Men Days of Future Past and, uh, you know, um, X-Men Apocalypse, the Quicksilver scenes. So it starts off like that where you feel like it's going to try to copy both of those scenes. But then it becomes something else entirely. It seems like uh, the director, Andy, uh, uh, saw the X-Men movies and was thinking... Okay, we should not fully copy that. Let's make it our own thing. So he knows that The Flash is a comedy. So he made it uh, incredibly goofy. So uh, The Flash sees the babies and uh, he's uh, running low on energy. And it seems like uh, this is going to be a very, very, very uh, dramatic moment. But then all of a sudden he sees a vending machine and burritos and stuff. And uh, he's just chowing down to get his uh, energy level up. And then he starts rescuing the babies. But... <laughs> Okay, the babies, the CGI on them is not finished. <laughs> it is really not. Maybe babies, uh, making CG babies is hard. Maybe, because I don't think I've seen a realistic CG baby yet, you know? Even like in uh, movies uh, like uh, Twilight or anything like that. Was that a moth? I think that was a moth. Uh, uh, even uh, CG movies, like uh, even the babies in like Twilight or something like that, they don't look uh, re uh, good and stuff like that. So maybe CG babies is just incredibly difficult to make. So, but uh, this scene was so much fun. It's him trying to save the babies and the nurse and uh, put them down and stuff like that while everything is crushing uh, towards him and also trucks are falling from the sky and stuff like that and he has to save a therapy dog too and stuff. It was fun. But I gotta say, the most... <laughs> this imagery, man. The Flash putting a baby in a microwave. What? <laughs> I understood why he did it. It makes sense why he did it. But at the same time, so the Flash, because he's using the Speed Force, uh, he can use the electricity to turn on uh, electrical equipment. So because this micro microwave, it's not plugged into anything, you know, but he made it cook a burrito. So he is able to cook a burrito and then uh, take it out from there and eat it. And then he puts the baby in there. <laughs> 
And then when he uh, uh, stops the Speed Force, uh, when he has uh, saved everybody and uh, time is, uh, uh, you know, in real time now, then you hear the ding sound from the microwave. And I was like, that microwave is still working? He just microwaved a baby? Why else would it make that sound? Yeah, that's the thing. Microwaves do not make that sound unless you're using them. So why the hell would that make that sound if it was never on? So which means it was on and that baby was cooked. <laughs> that's what it felt like to me. Oh my God. So yes, Barry Allen putting a baby in a microwave. That is hilarious. I love it. I'm sorry. If uh, that sounds horrible to you, I could totally understand. But that's the dark humor I fucking love, man. <laughs> Okay, so we have, after that, uh, then we see uh, Barry Allen uh, trying to um, uh, talk with uh, Iris West, and it's uh, great to see her, uh, 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 Kiersey uh, Clemens. It's great to see her here, because her scenes were cut from the original version, the Josh Whedon version of Justice League, and then she was added in uh, because of uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, so it's great to see her here. Um, and I do want it uh, both with them, but at this point, I was worried that because this movie is supposed to be a reboot of the entire DC Universe to uh, make room for James Gunn uh, DC Universe. So I thought that something bad would happen and we wouldn't see Iris again, or there's going to be a different Iris, you know, or something like that. That's what I was worried about. She's not in this movie much. She only shows up uh, three times. But again, I thought that Kiersey did a great job. I wish there was more of her there, uh, more of her in the movie. But again, this movie is almost two and a half hours long, so I can totally understand if they have to cut scenes, they probably have to cut Iris, and they probably have to cut uh, some other backstory for some other characters as well. So I can totally understand that. But uh, this movie, though, does focus so much on The Flash. Even though, yes, it has Michael Keaton as Batman and Supergirl and stuff like that. But this is entirely a Flash movie. And I'm so happy that it made him the main character. And what I like about this uh, movie the most is that there are two different Flashes. Uh, there's the main one, the older one, and then there's the younger one with the, the longer hair and everything. And he's like 18 years old in this. And yes, uh, what I love the most is that uh, because they're both raised differently, because uh, Barry Allen lost his mother at a young age, but now he managed to uh, save his mother from death, which meant that the uh, Barry in his timeline would grow up spoiled and uh, he would just be energetic, be happy, be outgoing and everything. So it totally made sense on, uh, you know, this uh, drastic change. And this, uh, the differences in backgrounds, even though they are the same person, but they're not the same person. So I really do like that. And I like the fact that the Barry we know, who can be annoying sometimes, but he found out that he's annoying. So he's being annoyed by the younger version of himself. And I thought that was really clever. Um, I can totally understand people not liking the young Barry. He is really obnoxious, and I can totally understand that. But the fact that there's so much phys uh, physical humor with him, like he's often the uh, butt of the joke, so he ends up uh, getting himself hurt and everything. So uh, that's why I was like, okay, that's fine. That's funny, you know? Like uh, he uh, is trying to figure out these powers, but because he's uh, inexperienced, everything... Uh, Everything doesn't work. Like uh, him trying to face through uh, walls and stuff, he loses his clothes, he's naked. He's trying to uh, control his uh, charges. Unfortunately, he uh, makes a city go blackout and stuff like that, you know? So I do like that. And I like that by the end, uh, the uh, immature, the young, inexperienced 18-year-old Barry, he ends up being a bit more mature and he realizes the stakes, what's going on, and he's trying to prevent... Uh, the death of his mother so it all comes together in the end so I'm happy about that I do like the fact that this movie is uh, also feels like a origin story of the Flash that we get to see how he get his powers uh, what happened uh, to him that made it become the Flash so yeah I do like that this movie is treated like an origin story of the Flash and it actually worked um I will say, though, the, the weird effect with uh, him going back in time. It is a cool idea. Don't get me wrong. But that's the thing. Because it seemed like... Uh, because in Josh Whedon's Justice League, they never dealt with the time travel aspect. That was only dealt with in the Zack Snyder cut. 
And in the Zack Snyder cut, he uh, when he uh, was able to use the Speed Force and go back in time, you see the blue atmosphere and everything. Yeah, that's here. But then it becomes uh, different. Like, it's an evolution, I guess. Like, uh, him going back in time, but it's like him on a treadmill in this giant energy bubble. And if he runs backwards... Time uh, goes backwards, too. So I thought that was a really cool idea. A little weird compared to, you know, the power he had in uh, the Snyder Cut. But at the same time, I don't mind it because it's visually very cool. Him going back in time, you see, like, a different, like, it's like him uh, trying to rewind the videotape. And uh, you see, like, a different, uh, like, uh, stills of uh, his past. So it shows him saving the babies at one point, and then it goes back in time where he was... I don't think it showed Darkseid or anything, or the new version of Steppenwolf, but it did show him fighting off uh, um, Superman in uh, the Justice League movie. So it did show that, because it showed uh, uh, bare-chested uh, Henry Cavill. Speaking of, which, speaking of which, out of all the cameos to show in this movie, you're not going to show Henry Cavill, like, in person? You only have the backside of him, which is probably another guy, and also a CG version of him. You do not have Henry Cavill, which makes me mad, you know. Why couldn't you just bring him back? <laughs> he wants to be Superman. Make him Superman again, you know? God, that made me angry <laughs> when I saw the CG version of uh, uh, Bear Chested Henry uh, Cavill during the scene. But, again, I really love the movie. So it shows him going back in time, and that was really cool. And then uh, he, um, again, with the tomato soup, uh, the tomato sauce or something like that, he managed to put it back in the cart. So apparently that changed everything. But he was trying to go back to the present. But uh, uh, Dark Flash uh, was there and stopped him. And then he pushed him into the, uh, um, I forgot what year it's supposed to be. But that's when uh, he's able to encounter 18-year-old uh, Barry Allen. And then uh, he realized that he realized that because it's the same date of uh, when he's supposed to get his powers, uh, he made uh, young Barry Allen get electrocuted, which gives him the powers. But then the original Barry that we know loses his powers. Uh, so now we have uh, and now we have Barry trying to be a teacher to this inexperienced Barry on how to control his powers. And I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, so. So it seemed like he was passing the torch in a way. As if, like, uh, it's Barry Allen to Wally West, in a way. Speaking of which, I always thought that uh, Ezra Miller uh, played uh, Wally West compared to Barry, Barry Allen. Barry Allen can crack jokes. He can. But Wally West, th this, his whole personality felt more like Wally West compared to Barry Allen. And I know people hated that. Uh, so, yeah, it did, but uh, after a while, I just said, this is Barry anyway, so I'm, I might as well just deal with that. But I thought uh, Ezra Miller did a pretty good job. Um, so after they got the powers, and then they realized that they ch uh, uh, changed everything, because they were talking about Back to the Future, and it's Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly instead of uh, Michael J. Fox. And then I think uh, they said Kevin Bacon is no longer in Footloose. He was uh, Maverick in uh, Top Gun. <laughs> and... Uh, um, I forgot who they said uh, was in uh, Footloose in this universe, but yeah, when uh, when Ezra uh, when Barry Allen just stood up and said, "Oh my God, Eric Stoltz is in Back to the Future," I broke the universe. <laughs> that was fun. That was really funny. Um, and then they realized that um, Aquaman doesn't exist because uh, Thomas Curry never met Nicole Kidman. Uh, Wonder Woman, they have no idea where uh, who she is or where she is. And uh, Superman doesn't exist here because apparently he died already as a kid, as a baby. They didn't know this yet, but yeah, when, it, uh, when they later found out, oh my God. <laughs> but uh, then they realized that there is a Bruce Wayne here. And yes, there is a Batman. So they meet up with uh, Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne. And he has this long hair. He's like a hobo, but he still kicks ass. He keeps kicking the ass of the original Barry Allen, but uh, he keeps missing on the young Barry Allen. So he gets himself hurt. So I thought that was fun. And it was cool hearing Michael Keaton talk about the multiverse and, you know, the different universes and how the sp uh, he's using spaghetti as an example, too. I thought that was really cool. That was really, really cool. 
And then uh, they show the Batcave, and Michael Keaton got the haircut. He dons the suit. Uh, he agrees to help them. So, and it, uh, and they are talking about canon events as well, just like in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So uh, they're thinking that maybe um, there's always going to be a Batman who's going to have Alfred and everything, stuff like that. And he always has to lose his parents. So that's a canon event and stuff like that. So, yeah, they do talk about that. Then they go to Russia because they ha- they believe they found Superman. But it's not Superman. It's actually Supergirl. And uh, it, I thought she did a great job. And the action scene in Russia was really, really cool, especially with Batman kicking ass. Uh, the way he fights and everything, the way he uses the grapple gun tool, uh, it is a bit similar to how Ben Affleck uh, Batman fights in uh, the warehouse scene in Batman v Superman, but at the same time here, yeah, Michael Keaton fighting the wet, same way that I always thought he fought in the original movies, I loved it. And he was so... even. He's pushing like 70 and stuff like that, but he's able to do all these things too and still kick ass and I love it. And he's always uh, tried to uh, do calculations and measurements, like the part where he says, uh, how much do you weigh? And he's uh, thinking about the weight of uh, uh, each Barry and uh, Supergirl and himself while using the charge and everything too. That was cool. And him trying to use a flip phone, trying to hack into the uh, Soviet Union. And uh, there was a funny joke where the young Flash uh, said that he pushed every single single combination so that's why they were able to hack in <laughs> that was that was funny um so um so then we have supergirl she's able to i do like the fact that she's super skinny because she never felt the sun so when she's out in the sun she's gaining muscle she's gaining a uh, uh, strength and everything and uh, she's gaining a uh, skin tone as well that was really awesome and i like uh, her fighting too and Okay, so the part where she realized that kal is dead, because she said that as soon as she uh, got to Earth, um, she's uh, been imprisoned and been experimented on. So that's why she really hates the humans. She doesn't want to save Earth. But uh, she uh, still remembered the symbol on her chest, which stands for hope. So she wants. She still wants to bring hope. So I, I really love that part. And also when she confronts General Zod, and uh, uh, at this point she doesn't know where Kal El is. Uh, she's trying to figure it out. But General Zod said that, oh, we found him already. And then you realize he killed Kal in this universe as a baby. He actually did it. But uh, Kara is the one that actually has. Um, I forgot the word is, uh, the cryptex? No, um, the codex, the codex. Uh, yeah, she has it implanted on her, so her blood is the uh, uh which uh, could uh, save the species of Krypton and all that stuff. So uh, they switched that around. But yeah, when uh, she uh realized what General Zod has done, that's when we saw in the trailers uh when she was yelling at somebody, "What did you do?" So it turned out, yeah, she was yelling that to Zod, and she realized that Kal El is dead, and she immediately starts punching him. And I love that. I really love that because that reminded me so much of Man of Steel when General Zod uh was uh threatening um uh, uh, Superman's mom. Uh, and uh, then we, he comes in and he says, don't you dare threaten my mother. I, it gave me the same emotion and I loved it. So when Supergirl is raging and she wants to kill Zod at this point, I loved it. Uh, but I gotta say, the most shocking thing is that they both, uh, everyone fails. Like in this universe, they all have to die. That shocked me so much when the first time they did it. Like, uh, Supergirl is dead, and uh, Michael Keaton Batman is dead. So I was like, wait, so what are they going to do? Okay, so they're going to go back in time and try to save everyone. But then they did it again. Michael Keaton as Batman dies, even though it's a completely different uh, path and a different uh, way. And also Supergirl dies uh, in a different way as well. So I'm like, oh my god, they're going this route, aren't they? No matter what they do... It's a canon event. They can't change it. They have to die. In this universe, no matter what they do, they have to die. It is written. It is their fate. And um, so I guess uh, it is similar to uh, Flashpoint Paradox because, uh, you know, uh, they uh, set off the bomb or something like that and the world is going to be destroyed. So Barry realized he has no choice but to undo what he did. He cannot save his mother anymore. He has to make sure she dies. 
So, yeah, they do go that route. Um, and, again, I was honestly shocked that uh, they are going the route they did. Like, Supergirl's dead. Batman is dead. And I saw Michael Keaton has Batman die twice in this movie. And I was sad. <laughs> I was really sad. The first time he died, he sacrificed himself by trying to blow up the ship. But it didn't matter because the ship was unfazed. But the second time, he was actually taken down, uh, trying to uh, fight off Nan, which was a really cool scene because Nan was destroying the Batwing and the Batman was spinning around and he gets out and then he uh, gets climbs on the, uh, the back of Nan and he keeps uh, planting uh, bombs on him too. So I thought, wow, this is awesome. Ba Michael Keaton's Batman is trying to take down this super alien god. And it was awesome and then he dies, <laughs> which made me really sad. Uh, so, um, oh, I have to go back actually, because I got to talk about the emotional scene. Yeah. I love the scenes where Barry is with his mother and, uh, but the scene I love the most is when the two Barry's were talking to each other in the back cave because, um, uh, of course, uh, young in inexperienced Barry was, uh, you know, having so much fun being in the Batcave and everything. And um, uh, he's uh, uh, making a comment about his mother and stuff like that. So Barry, the uh, original Barry is incredibly angry with him. And he was yelling at him for taking everything for granted that he doesn't know uh, what could happen, what's going to happen and everything and how good that this Barry had it and all that stuff. And of course, the young Barry had no idea what uh, he's talking about because he was raised this way. He's uh, raised a happy life. So, and the original Barry is jealous of that and he wants that, but he realized that uh, it's not the young Barry's fault, that it's uh, completely different backgrounds, completely different ways. So yeah, I thought that scene was really, really good. That was uh, my uh, most favorite. I, I gotta say, uh, besides uh, Barry and his mother, yeah, that's uh, also another one of my most favorite scenes in the movie. Um, okay, so now we have to go back uh, to uh, the two Barrys trying to figure out uh, how to stop everything. So at this point, uh, young Barry got stabbed and he, I guess because he phased, so the the matter, the like the metal and stuff like that is part of him now. So and he, uh, every time he tries to go back in time trying to stop uh, Supergirl getting killed by Zod and he keeps failing, he keeps getting more uh, metal or some, I don't know. I don't know what exactly it is. I assume it's metal. Like, he's getting more metal impaled into him, so it becomes, like, his spikes and stuff. So uh, after a while, I thought, oh, is this, like, a different version of Doomsday in a way? You know, like, getting spikes and everything and being uh, corrupted and stuff like that. So, yeah, and then it turns out that this young Barry becomes the Dark Flash. Like, uh, he is stuck trying to figure out how to save everyone, and he spent his entire life trying to figure out how to do this. But because of all that time, he gets corrupted, and he becomes this mass. So I thought that was a very, very cool idea, that it's not the original Barry that became this, it's the young Barry. And when young Barry realized what he has become, and uh, the Dark Flash wants to kill the original Barry for this because he uh, believes the original Barry will kill off the mother, young Barry sacrificed himself trying to save the original Flash, and he ends up dying. And that reminds me of Looper. Because when uh, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt shoots himself and then Bruce Willis dies. So uh, it's the exact same thing here. This young Barry create, uh, eventually becomes the darker Flash, but because young Barry killed himself, Dark Flash doesn't exist anymore. So I thought that was cool. But uh, I... Uh, I know some people say it doesn't make sense because if young Barry dies, doesn't that mean the Barry that we know should die as well? But uh, I remember earlier they talked about it. There was this dialogue about the Barry saying that, okay, I don't know what's going to happen I because uh, today's the date where I'm supposed to get up my powers. And if you, if you don't get your powers, that probably means that I don't get my powers and I don't know what's going to uh, happen after that. So he doesn't know if anything that happens to young Barry will affect uh, him. But it turns out they are two completely different Barrys from separate universes, just so it doesn't matter. It's just that the Dark Flash is actually the same universe as the Young Flash because he becomes that. So that's why uh, the Dark Flash is able to vanish because young Barry has uh, died. So then we get all the cameos here and... 
So we see the original Flash, uh, Jay Garrett, I think that's the name. I'm trying to remember. Uh, the one, the original helmet and everything too. That was cool to see. And we see Adam West Batman. We see uh, Christopher Reeve Superman and Helen Slater Supergirl. I, I'm sorry, I loved it. Th this moment right here made it's a lot like uh, seeing Egon, Ghost Egon in Ghostbusters Afterlife. So I can totally understand people saying, oh my God, that's disrespectful or something like that. I can totally understand it, but if the families of Christopher Reeve uh, gave their blessing, if Helen Slater gave her blessing as Supergirl and stuff like that, I think it's fine. But again, uh, I know some people say, oh, no, that's just wrong. You should never do that, stuff like that. I can totally understand everyone's opinions. For me, though, I loved it. I really loved seeing Christopher Reeve and also Helen Slater's Supergirl together on the same uh, screen. Even though it's CGI, but I'm happy about it. And honestly, I thought it looked pretty good. Uh, because at least the camera wasn't too close up on their faces. It was actually farther away. So that's why I was okay with that. Uh, but man, there is one cameo, which I did not expect at all. Which I was so happy about. Nicolas Cage as Superman. Oh my god, they went there. Nicolas Cage as Superman. From the failed, uh, you know, Tim Burton Superman project. Holy crap. They actually went there. They actually showed it. It is CG, so it is a bit of a bummer. You can definitely tell because the skin textures are not that realistic. Uh, but at the same time, we have Nicolas Cage as Superman. And I was like, woo! <laughs> oh, man, that was so much fun. Um, I do not think they ever showed uh, Val Kilmer as Batman. Um but yeah, uh, they I there's probably some other things happening in the background, so probably I missed some uh, things. But yeah, um, seeing uh, all these cameos, I loved it. So uh, then Barry realized he has to undo what he did, so he went back to the past, trying to uh, put the tomato sauce back, but gets the final heart to heart with his mother, which was which was really touching. But also, it was spoiled from the trailers because that was one of the shots in the trailers of him reaching up to his mother and uh, she's putting her hand on his face and stuff like that. Yeah, that was in the trailer. So that's why I was like, because uh, that happened so late in the movie, people know what's going to happen, you know? So that's why it's a bummer that uh, they keep putting that in the trailers because I felt like they should have cut it. That's from the, like, the final five minutes of the movie, you know? So he stopped it. She dies. But he managed to change the uh, angle of the... No, no, he didn't change the an angle of the camera. I'm sorry. He changed the location of the tomato sauce. So he was able to make the tomato sauce on a higher level because er er earlier they said that they had old footage of uh, the from the supermarket. And uh, because uh, Barry Allen's dad never looked up, uh, they couldn't confirm his alibi. But this time, because he looked up to reach the tomato sauce... That confirmed his alibi, so he's able to, uh, you know, not be in prison. He's able to uh, be free. So, I guess, uh, so yeah, I guess uh, that's fine. But again, uh, probably some stock. That's the thing, though. He did. They said uh, they went to the sp supermarket, like, uh, the day before. So, when Barry Allen changed the uh, location of the tomato sauce, uh, is are the store employees okay with that you know don't you think that they would accidentally bring it down or something like that or did uh barry decide to wait another day and then he puts the tomato sauce up does anyone confront him about it i don't know so that's why i'm a uh a little confused about that but anyway so barry allen's uh, father is free uh barry barry meets up with iris and then he gets a phone call from bruce wayne i did not expect this at all i did not so i thought we were gonna see ben affleck again no, it's George Clooney. George Clooney as Batman. What? <laughs> I did not think it would go this route. So George Clooney is Batman now. And yeah, I guess Aquaman is still, Jason Momoa is still Aquaman in this universe and it looked like nothing else has changed besides George Clooney being Batman. What? I, here's the thing. I love to believe that because George Clooney is Batman now, Arnold Schwarzenegger is Mr. Freeze in this universe. <laughs> I, I love to believe that. I love to believe that Chris O'Donnell is Robin in this universe. Yeah, my friend and I were talking about that. This movie should have brought Marlon Wayans as Robin. 
bad because uh, he was originally supposed to be Robin, but then it uh, became uh, uh, Chris O'Donnell was uh, chosen in the end. So that would have been cool too to see Marlon Wayans as Robin in this. So that would have been fun. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, that was the first ending. Then we have the mid credit scene where uh, the Flash is talking with uh, Aquaman. So Aquaman is drunk. He falls down into the puddle and he says that, just leave me here. I just want to stay here. <laughs> and he's just drowning himself a, a bit in the puddle. That was hilarious. But uh, he still wants alcohol. It's just a fun scene. That's it. There's really nothing else added to it or something like that. So yeah, it's just a gag. Uh, so nothing really important, but at the same time, it's fun that, uh, J uh Jason Momoa is back in as Aquaman in this. But again, you could not get Henry Cavill as Superman? What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm sorry. But yeah, we have Gal Gadot back as Wonder Woman. She's in here! And I'm like, what?! I thought she was not going to be, but no, she's in here. So she has no problems being in this movie. Ben Affleck has no problems being in this movie. And we have Ezra Miller as The Flash, Jason Momoa as Aquaman. We cannot get Henry Cavill as Superman again. I know about uh, Ray Fisher as uh, Cyborg. He doesn't want to come back because of all the harassment and stuff like that from Walter Armada and Josh Whedon and everything. And I totally respect his decision for that. It's a shame that uh, they couldn't show his face at all or something like that. Actually, no, I think they did a CG model of him. But other than that, no, there's no voice line or anything from him or anything. So that's why it's a bit of a bummer that Ray Fisher is not back in Cyborg in this. But yeah, um, uh, that's... Uh... And also, there's no callback to the CW show where they show Ezra Miller and Grant Gustin talking to each other and stuff like that. I was kind of hoping that uh, they would show that scene again for this movie because, you know, him trying to go back in time, but it turns out to be a different timeline and it turns out that there's a different Flash and stuff like that. That would have been a fun scene too, but no, it was just for the CW thing, so that's a bit of a bummer. I'm wondering when exactly did that happen then? Unless that's a different Barry Allen, a uh, different Ezra Miller Barry Allen or something like that, you know? So that's a bit of a bummer. Um, what else? I thought the music is good. Uh, the musical cues with Tim Burton's Batman, that was really cool. And also we hear John Williams' Superman score again, but this time with Christopher Reeve instead of Henry Cavill's Superman, so I'm okay with that. Um, you do hear a bit of a Man of Steel uh, in here too, so that was uh, cool. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, the opening scene with uh Ben Affleck's Batman. That was freaking awesome, man. Because the the way it was uh the tone of it is a lot like uh The Dark Knight, especially with like the the blue filter and everything too. And also he's wearing this like armored suit uh, uh while uh you know using the grapple hook to go onto this vehicle and also swinging around, flying around and stuff like that. That's what I expected Batman to do, especially Ben Affleck's Batman. So I'm really, really happy about that. They show two different Batmans, the way they fight, the way they use their vehicles and everything, and it's completely different, and I love it. That's I love it. But the thing is, I'm wondering, what is what is in store for the future of The Flash? Because I remember there's an article saying that James Gunn is fine with uh, Ezra Miller being the Flash in future projects. So that's why I'm wondering, what is the future of DC? Because James Gunn said that the next Superman movie is a reboot. It, it's not Henry Cavill. It's someone else, someone younger. So that's why I'm confused about this one, because I thought this is going to reboot the entire thing, you know? Like, okay, we're going to get the new Superman, new Wonder Woman, new Batman, new everyone. But no, the only change is that uh, George Clooney is Batman, but I'm pretty sure James Gunn is not going to have that for Batman the Brave and the Bold, unless he will, which will be very interesting. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm wondering what what's going to happen after this, because the DCEU, as we know, will end with Aquaman 2. And the new one's going to begin with, I believe they said the Blue Beetle movie. So that's why I'm wondering about the future. Like, what is this supposed to lead up to, you know, especially since they said they don't mind Ezra Miller staying as the Flash. So, yeah, uh, I'm very curious on uh, what's going to happen for the future. I hope that this DCEU still exists because I do want Henry Cavill to have another chance and I do want Ray Fisher to have another chance as Cyborg in here. So yeah, I do want this to continue. 
I'm excited to see what happens if they do continue it, especially with George Clooney as Batman in this, unless uh, Barry Allen decides to go back in time again to try to fix everything again. Damn it, Barry. But yeah, if there is going to be a sequel to this, what are they going to do? Are they going to show that the killer was uh, Thawne the entire time? Are they going to show a reverse Flash or something? So I wonder. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the powers of the Flash. I'm sorry. It is cool that the Barry is able to spin a tornado with his hand so he could do that and also spins around and makes a tornado and uh, sweeps everyone away. And also they could uh, develop a charge so fast they could shoot lightning bolts uh, from his fingers when they touch each other. That was really cool. And also the phasing thing, that was a very cool effect too because when they show uh, Barry phasing for the first time because he had to get the two beers from another uh, from a neighbor's refrigerator. So he's like... And then, uh, because he shook the beer bottle so much, when he tries opening it, it spills all over him. That was a fun gag. So yeah, the physical comedy here is really cool. And I like that the inexperienced Barry, when he tries phasing, uh, he keeps getting naked. So it reminds me so much of Mirio from uh, uh, My, uh, My Hero Academia. Whenever he tries to uh, phase uh, through something, he has, uh, unfortunately, because his uh, uniform is not the same uh, like a... Uh, you know, hair or something like that. It's not made of his hair, so that's why he keeps becoming naked. So that reminded me of that, and that was a fun gag too. I wonder if that was uh, influenced by My Hero Academia, to be honest, because the Muriel's thing happened years ago, to be honest. So yeah, uh, I'm wondering if uh, it, it it was an insp inspiration. Uh, what else? Oh uh, yeah, the powers were cool, and uh, I love the gag where uh, Barry was trying to uh, run in the museum when he realized he lost his powers, so it showed him goofily doing the ice skating thing. That was fun. That was really, really funny. <laughs> so yeah, this movie had a lot of great humor, and uh, I can understand not all jokes land. Some of them do fall flat. I do understand uh, young Barry being very obnoxious and everything, but for me... I thought the humor worked out very well. Michael Keaton's Batman was great, and he's still funny. I love the part where uh, he's <laughs> excited to electrocute Barry. <laughs> and uh, he even told Barry, no, nope, uh, just to let you know, I think this is a horrible idea. <laughs> so that was good. And uh, Supergirl, I love the part where she raged when she realized that the uh, Zod kill uh, Kal-El. And I like... Uh, when she uh, realized uh, that she has to be the symbol of hope and stuff like that, that was cool too. I love her suit. I love her look. And sure, she's not the same like a long, blonde, uh, bubbly Supergirl that we all know. But I'm happy with this alternate version of her. I really like it. So, yep, that's The Flash. I really loved it. Can't wait to get it on Blu-ray. So I can totally understand people not liking this. But I have to be honest, I love this. So I'm sorry if uh, you think I'm a whore. <laughs> All right. Yep. That's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Later.